But uh, it was a mistake from your part, or was it perhaps, uh, as some would put it, uh, uh, perhaps a result of judges who may have been prejudiced one way or the other? No, not at all. I think it was a cooking competition. You know, they take 17 of the best chefs in the country at the time mm -hmm. and put them on national television and put them through this rigorous, um, you know, series of challenges. Um, at that point, it was only six of us left. You know, I made it to the top six, and we had to do a fast casual concept. Every chef on there was a James Beard Award-winning chef or a James Beard Award-nominated mm -hmm. chef. I was the youngest chef in the competition. So Very young indeed. You are still young. Mm -hmm. um, so I felt it was no prejudice. I used frozen product. I shouldn't use frozen product. Mm -hmm. I think I got the competition like get in my head, mm -hmm. and you know that's where I went wrong. But uh, you know, I'm doing a pop-up, a fast casual concept in D.C the first, second, and third, and you may see chicken and waffles appearing in this pop-up. What do you think led to that? Uh, is it perhaps because you may not have been given some tips prior to the event? No. You know, it's a, it's, it's a competition, so nobody gets tips. We're all thrown, we're all we're under, under the same scope and all under the same pressure, so I don't want to say I had you know, uh, uh, a misfortunate circumstance. No think, homework, really? No requirement for homework? Some homework? Oh, Some no. Perhaps talking to people who... Oh, no. It's, it's, this is your challenge. Get in there, go to Whole Foods, go shop for it, <laughs> and now we're judging you. <laughs> <laughs> There's no time for homework. You know, we get about 30 minutes to kind of think of what we're doing, and we have to feed 200 people. So, you know, it's very fast, and if you make one slight mistake, you're going home. And I just happened to make that mistake that day. You know. How old is uh, your restaurant so far? My restaurant isn't open yet. It opens in four months. In four months? Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. And um, any reaction so far before it opens? Because uh, I understand it's supposed to be a very uh, high class type of Yeah, I mean, we restaurant. had a, a, a large um, spread in the Washington Post the other day. We were on the cover of the food section of the Washington Post for the restaurant. And, um, you know, Tim Carmen did an excellent job at, at um, telling my story. Um, and I think we're getting a lot of good feedback. You know, the way that I was presented on the show, um, you know, it showed just a real person. It didn't seem like I was just a reality um, television star. You know, really? I, was, I was the person that was consoling the other competitors, giving people advice, helping people break down lamb, because I want to beat somebody at their best and at their worst. You know, I thought I already won when I got called to go on the competition, being that young. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I wasn't, I had no, I did not have a malicious bone in my body being on that show. Um, I wanted to really win by pure skill. So. Who do you expect to be a, the typical client of your restaurant? I think it's going to be the whole gamut. You know, it, it's definitely an expensive restaurant um, um, to the average person, but, you know, we're not, we're not selling a meal if you're just hungry. You don't go there just, oh, I'm hungry, let me go to the Shaw Bijou. It's no, oh, it's your birthday. Let's have a celebration. So it's like an event. You know, you go to a Broadway play. Who are the typical guests at Broadway plays? It's, it's the whole gamut. You know, it's people that enjoy theater. It's people that go in for an experience. And I think my restaurant is more of an experience destination. So I think you'll see, you know, all walks of life coming to the Shaw Bijou. Would Shaka Sali, for example, qualify to be one of your clientele, really? Would who? Shaka Sali. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> How much, for example, would uh, a seating cost or a plate for that much? We're still um, working on the price point. You know, we don't want to put it out there, but it's definitely going to be at least $150. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. wow. So what capital are we talking about now? You know, what, how much are you using to fund the restaurant? How much did the restaurant cost? Yeah. Is it what you're asking? The capital, yeah. It was a, almost uh, $1.5 million. So you're build such out. a very rich guy, very rich dude. I'm rich in positive attitude, I'd say that, and rich in, um, rich in love, I would say. Well, congratulations on that, at least. <laughs> Thank you. You're tuned in to Straight Talk Africa. We'll have more of a discussion in a moment. But first, here is Mariama Jello. Take it away, Mariama. Well, I think, Shaka, I'm going to start a fundraising so we can be ready to, uh, for the Shah Bijou when it opens. So we make sure we can afford it and uh, we can uh, obviously be part of that experience. Um, still to come, we'll reveal some of the fantastic and quite juicy feedback we've received from our audience through social media. But now here is our letter of the week from a Straight Talk Africa Facebook fan who makes me very hungry talking about his favorite Zambian food. 
Emmanuel Mponga writes, no African food beats Zambian shima, which is cooked using water and mealy meal. When you have it in the morning, you are covered for the whole day.